Hey. Armor skills are a very important part of the game. I'd even argue that armor skills, for the most part, take priority over defense, unless your defense is just too low, like if you're just starting high rank, for example. If you pause and go to the second page, you'll see status. The third page of this... The third page of this menu will show you armor skills. As you can see on the left side, the Mafumofu armor gives us Cold Illumination High, Divine Protection, and Heat Ink Low. On the right side of the status page, you'll see a breakdown of all the skill points you have equipped. As you can see, some of these skills are not green, which means they're not active. Armor skills will need at least 10 points to activate, with some requiring more. Also, you can see that Heat Res is at negative 10. This has activated a negative skill. In this case, negative 10 heat resistance will give us heat ink low, which will increase the negative effects of being in hot areas such as the daytime desert or volcano. You'll take more damage over time than you normally would without a cool drink. Meanwhile, cold elimination makes it so that you stay warm in cold environments, so you'll never need to use a hot drink. It's worth noting that armor skills are gained from armor, so if you're not wearing armor, you'll most likely not have any armor skill points at all. It's also worth noting that armor skills and the skills they activate are often named separately. This can be confusing at first, but in some cases are necessary. A good example of this is Psychic Vision. When you have 10 points in this skill, you will activate Detect. If you get to 15 points in this skill, you will activate Auto Tracker. These are similar skills but function differently enough that having a different name can be helpful. One could argue they could have just named it Detect Plus 1 and Detect Plus 2, but I think this way has a bit more personality. The main takeaway here is that the green skills on the right are activated, having 10 or more skill points. They can be positive or negative. The white skills are not active, but still have some points in them, which again can be positive or negative. Skill points 10 and over will activate a positive skill, usually, and skill points negative 10 and under will activate a negative skill, usually. Yo. When you're at the smith, you can view various weapons and armor. You can see how they compare to your own by pressing square. If we go to armor, on page 2, you can see how many slots it has. Slots will allow you to put decorations in them to increase your armor skills by a certain amount. Decorations are very useful for getting the few points you're missing to activate a skill, and also for removing negative ones. For example, the negative skill on the Mafumofu armor is Heat Increased Low, with negative 10 skill points. If you were to put in a Cool Breeze Jewel, adding 1 point to make it negative 9, it would deactivate the skill. Conversely, if you had 9 points in a skill and added a decoration to make it 10 or higher, it would activate, but at 9 it would do nothing. It doesn't have to be 10 exactly, but it has to be at least 10. On page 3 of the info sheet here, it'll show you what will happen to your active armor skills if you were to equip this. As you can see, this armor would deactivate both Divine Protection and Heat Ink Low, because removing the Mafumovu Hood would remove the positive and the negative skill points from that, and replace it with the positive and negative skill points from this here Gia Prey Home. On page 4, you can see the skill points of the armor piece and how they stack up to your own. Blue numbers would be higher than your currently equipped armor piece, currently comparing the helmet slot specifically, and red would be lower than your currently equipped piece. Notice how fire resistance is red at negative 2 because your current skill with it is 0, so it's lower. Also notice how psychic viz is at plus 2 but still red because it's lower than your current helmet which has plus 3. Normally when you're looking at armor, you can tell what skills would activate or not by just inspecting the fourth page here but usually not entirely. The Gia Prey armor, if I crafted and equipped all the pieces, would give me snow resistance and detect. I would also have some points in the armor skills guard and ice resistance, as well as negative points in the armor skill fire resistance, but not enough to activate any of those three skills. It would be much more effective for you to check the wiki for Freedom Unite to help decide on what armor set you want to use. For the most part, you don't want to mix pieces of armor unless you're counting up how many points you're getting from each piece and it's actually activating something. For help on mixing pieces of armor to get a good result, you should use a program called Athena's Armor Set Search. I'll go over that later. To find out what each skill does, you should also check the wiki. Not only will it explain the effects of each skill, but it will tell you how many points are required, how many levels of the skill there are, as well as the name of the activated skill. 
the Gear of Prey Waste has an interesting skill called Torso Ink. This is a very useful, but also kind of rare effect that will duplicate the skill points of whatever your torso piece has. If we go to page 3, you can see if I equip this, I wouldn't lose any skills. While I am losing the skill points from the Mafumofu coat, the waist, it is duplicating the points from the Mafumofu jacket, which is the torso piece. This won't always happen, but keep in mind that torso ink can be very useful, particularly when you put decorations in your chest piece, because that will also be duplicated by torso ink. Speaking of decorations, you will also notice that weapons will sometimes have decoration slots. This can help you activate skills that you normally wouldn't be able to otherwise, and can play into deciding what weapon you actually want to use. Athena's Armor Set Search is a very useful program and I highly recommend you use it if you can, especially once you start getting to late game. It's pretty easy to use, you first pick what hunter rank you are, and what star of quest that you are and at the village elder, as well as how many weapon slots you're willing to use. If you can't find a set, you can try increasing how many weapon slots here, just in case you could get what you want if you just switch to a weapon with that amount of slots. It would be up to you whether or not that trade-off is worth it. Pick your hunter's gender, just in case that's relevant. There are some female and male only armor pieces, and feel free to sort by something. I like to sort by base defense, as apart from armor skills I want a high defense, but you can focus on something like fire resistance for example. The difficulty sorting doesn't seem to work, so just ignore that, and we can exclude pieces of equipment from difficult monsters later on anyways. If you'd be fine with negative skills, check allows bad skills, otherwise if a skill collection is possible but has something negative it won't be shown to you. You can choose whether or not to use piercings, as they are usually challenging to acquire, or some of them can be, as well as allowing or dis disallowing torso ink, as they can have a lower defense than usual, I think, since there are only so many. The allow dummy checkbox is for the Japanese DLC and dummy items and tickets and such, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you don't know what this is, just leave it unchecked. Then you pick your hunter class, blade master, or gunner. Blade Master, of course, is for melee weapons, and Gunner is for bow, light bow gun, or heavy bow gun. Then you pick your skills. This is where a bit more of the knowledge of the game is necessary, and why this program is more useful the later game that you get into. If you look at this list of skills and don't even know where to start, just close the program and progress more into the game. Just come back and use it later. Either way, on the right are some skill filters. This can be helpful in finding what skill you want, and is just a nice way to figure out what you might want, because they're all categorized. You could get attack up large, but maybe you want some defense in there too, for example. Keep in mind that some skill combinations are just impossible in the game. This program's not going to work any magic for you, so if you're not able to get the skill combination that you want, maybe just tone back what you want by a little. Let's do something simple. I want big damage number. I want number go up. Unga bunga, give me attack up large, please. Let's put that in the program. And click quick search. That's a low armor, huh? This is another issue with using this program too early. You can technically get this armor from the guild hall, I think, in HR1, but it's not likely and not practical, in my opinion. I know that the Rathalos hunt from HR1 has limited rewards anyways, so you might not be able to get everything in this set anyways. If this happens where it's telling you to use something that you can't or don't want to get, click Advanced Search. This will open up a window to let you check off different pieces of armor. You can also see that some of these pieces of equipment are not bolded and not checked by default. This is because the program is choosing the most effective piece for that slot for what you're asking for. If you'd prefer, though, to use something like the Kutku armor, you can instead check those and uncheck the things you don't want to use and see if it spits out a set for you. You can also push these none buttons at the bottom to set all of these to none and click the ones that you want. As you can see, I can't get attack up large with just the Kutku armor, at least not with weapon slots. So let's try increasing that. If I increase it by one, go back to advanced search and search, nothing happens. But if I increase it by two, you can see I get some results. Any extra skills, positive or negative, will be shown under the decorations here and by whatever you've sorted the armors by, in my case, base defense. 
As you can see here, if I wanted to get attack up large early on, I could get it through the Kutku armor. If I wanted. This is just an example. You can also right click these pieces of armor in the list and it will show you what it takes to make that piece here as well as what skill points you're getting, and other information such as how many slots, base defense, and other resistance. This can help you figure out what you actually want to go for. If something needs a ruby or a plate and you just rather not go after that, you can use this information to help swap this piece out for something else in the advanced search. Let's try something a bit more involved. Let's say I want attack of large and earplugs because I'm going to go fight a Rathalos. I'm going to put these skills in and click search. Obviously, we can't get both of these skills in Village Elder 1, so let's start increasing that right here. I'm going to go up one at a time to see where we can earliest get these skills. As you can see, in Village Elder 6, we can get AUL and earplugs from a few sources. The program found 221 solutions, and I've sorted them by base defense. If I don't want to use, say, Tigrex fan braces, I can go into the advanced search and uncheck that. Let's say I haven't fought Azure Rathalos yet, so I want to uncheck those as well. Oops. Well, turns out I need some armor that I unchecked. In this case, the Azure Rathalos armor set. So let's go back in and click default on these and uncheck that Tigrex Vambrace again, because I got search results then. So you can see through some trial and error, you can find a way to maximize your output and optimize your armor selection. This program is extremely useful, and I highly recommend it. There are also versions of this software for other games. Athena, whoever you are, you've done extremely good work, and I've used this program for a very long time, and they are just incredible. I'll leave links to this program and other ones that, that they have made, as well as other things like wiki pages to armor and such like that. So yeah, this was a quick look at armor skills and how they can benefit you. Learning this system and how you can use it to your advantage is pretty important, so I hope I cleared up some things if you were confused as to how it works. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to add on to what I've already said. Again, I want to reiterate that you shouldn't feel like you need to make mixed sets. There are plenty of armor sets that work just fine with all the base pieces. Cenotar S is a great example of this, an armor set with skills that can carry you through high rank, basically. Also, don't feel like you always have to go for damage. Getting higher damage is important, because the less damage you do, the longer the fight takes, and the longer the fight takes, well, nobody's perfect. You're bound to make mistakes, so there is value in number go up beyond just unga bunga, if you get what I mean. But don't neglect the other skills in the game. If you want them, don't feel pressured into only picking the quote-unquote useful skills. If you want to use Auto Tracker because it makes you feel like a better hunter, then do that. If you want to use quick eating in wide area because you want to be able to buff and save people by using items, then absolutely do that. Part of what makes this game so special is the choice it gives you. There are 11 weapons and something like 80 armor skills. Feel free to express yourself. There is no wrong answer. Also, I know people probably want to know what skills are good for what weapon type, or what makes armor sets are good, or what's the best weapon and or armor, etc. I can see about getting around to some of those, but don't fixate too much on what the quote unquote best is, because ideally that could be and should be maybe different depending on who you ask. It'd be very boring if everyone just used the same things all the time. Feel free to like, subscribe, etc. You know the drill. Now, go forth and be skillful and such and all that. Have a good one.